Knives are not considered required gear for most caving activities, but are important if you'll be doing any rigging. In most cases, they're used for cutting rope or webbing to a desired length, but they can be used to remove old nylon anchor material, as well as for some gear repairs, or for cutting sausage or blocks of cheese. It should be emphasized that you should never use knives near weighted ropes because they can cut through these with surprising ease. If clothing or hair should become stuck in a rappel device while on rope, then other options such as a changeover, partner assist, or complicated solutions such as a haul or lower should all be considered, but a knife should never be used. Climbers often carry knives for many of the same reasons as cavers, and there are a few commercial options that are well suited for caving. Folding knives are preferred because they pack smaller, and the handle doubles as a sheath to protect the blade. Other characteristics that make for a good caving knife are a blade made from stainless steel and a handle that is resistant to corrosion, a way to clip the knife to a harness gear loop, and a locking blade. Blades are generally either straight or partially serrated. For rigging, where you need to cut webbing and kern mantle rope, I prefer serrated blades. They are more difficult to sharpen, but they cut through nylon more efficiently. In this video I'll review five options, including the Petzl Spatha, Edelred Rope Tooth, Tranga Piranha, Leatherman Skeletool CX, and Benchmade Mini Barrage. All of these knives have stainless steel blades of reasonably comparable hardness, and they lock open. The Petzl Spatha has a 3-inch partially serrated blade and a plastic handle that doubles as a sheath. The knife has a unique hole at the joint that is designed so that it can be clipped with a carabiner. The hinge mechanism is very stiff, which makes it difficult to open one-handed. But for caving, I actually think this is an advantage because the blade is very unlikely to open on its own. There is a textured plastic ring around the clipping hole that could be used to rotate the blade open even when wearing gloves, which is a big advantage of this knife. The plastic handle looks and feels a little cheap, but it works well enough. It helps keep the cost of the knife low, and it tends to get scratched anyway. The locking mechanism on the blade is very secure. There's a push release on the back of the handle to release the blade. The blade is sharp and holds an edge well. Because of the serrations, a tapered rod sharpener must be used to sharpen that portion of the blade. This is also true for the other serrated blade knives in this review. The Spatha is surprisingly light and is the second lightest knife in this review despite having the longest blade. The Edelrid Rope Tooth has a very similar design to the Petzl Spatha, but at a slightly lower price. It has a similar sized serrated blade with a similar plastic handle. The blade opening mechanism is also very stiff, which makes it difficult to open one-handed, but less likely to come open accidentally. There is no ring around the clipping hole, so the cutout of the blade must be used to open it, and the cutout is smaller and harder to grasp, which makes it difficult to open when wearing gloves. Also, the hole at the joint is designed to allow clipping with a carabiner, but the depth of the hole is greater than on the Spatha, and the diameter is a little smaller. As a result, it actually won't fit well on the majority of carabiners I've tried, and if you do find one that works, it doesn't rotate around as easily. The biggest concern I found with the rope tooth is the locking mechanism for the blade. It doesn't actually lock very securely. It's possible, without very much pressure, to get the blade to close without using the release which is a significant safety concern. The Trango Piranha is by far the lightest and smallest of these knives. Its small size makes it better suited as a knife for contingencies or emergencies rather than a dedicated knife for rigging. It has a hole for clipping to a carabiner, and when clipped to a beaner with a round cross section, the knife blade can't be opened. The blade locks open and is very sharp, but it's too short to be of much use at cutting food. It also doesn't have much of a handle, so cutting requires holding it with just a few fingers, but it is extremely light and compact. The Leatherman Skeletool CX is a simple multi-tool with a good knife blade that is easy to deploy. It's a bit more expensive than some of the other knives, but the pliers, wire cutters, bottle opener, and screwdriver bit holder make it a more versatile tool. But this versatility also makes it heavier, about three times the weight of the Spatha or Rope Tooth. There are several versions of the Skeletool, including those with serrated and non-serrated blades. The blade is a little smaller than on the Spatha or Rope Tooth, it opens and closes easily and has a positive lock. The Skeletool is a good option if you want one device that can be used for various repairs as well as a knife for rigging. I've used the pliers and wire cutters to make repairs to headlamps, but the smaller blade, higher weight, and less ergonomic handle make it a bit less useful as a rigging knife. Benchmade has a reputation for making very high quality knives. The Mini Barrage is the most expensive in this review and roughly twice the weight of the Spatha or Rope Tooth. The handle of the Mini Barrage is much better built than any of the other knives and has a full stainless steel liner. 
It's also the only knife with a spring-assisted opening, which makes it very easy to open one-handed, even with gloves on. The downside of an easy opening knife is that it's possible to catch the release pin in a way that causes it to open accidentally, which could be dangerous. However, the Mini Barrage is also the only knife in this review with a closure lock. If using the closure lock, which I recommend while caving, two actions are required to open the blade, which is a little slower, but both the blade lock and blade opening are easy to manipulate with gloves on. The Mini Barrage is the only knife without an easy way to connect it to a harness gear sling. There is a hole in the handle for threading a 3mm nylon lanyard, which is necessary if you want to clip it with a carabiner. When comparing these knives, perhaps the most important criterion is how well does it cut rope or webbing. I did a few tests with a suspended weight on 10mm PMI Maxwear rope. I did a similar test on 1-inch tubular webbing. I found that the Benchmade Mini Barrage was the fastest, followed very closely by the Petzl Spatha. Both knives cut through either rope or webbing in just 1-2 to two seconds with only 1-2 to two passes of the knife. The Leatherman Skeletool was the next best, followed by the Trango Piranha. The worst cutting knife, to my surprise, was the Edelred Rope Tooth. The blade looks very similar to the Spatha, and it was very sharp, but the serrations on the blade are much deeper, with sharper points than any of the other knives, and these sharp points tended to catch when trying to cut through nylon. This table summarizes some of the specifications of these knives, including the weight, blade length, overall folded length, and approximate retail cost. I would recommend any of these knives for caving use, with the exception of the Edelred Rope Tooth. It looks surprisingly similar to the Spatha, but does not perform nearly as well. You would be happier spending the extra $10 to get the Petzl. The critical flaws with this knife are that it doesn't cut rope or webbing very efficiently, and the blade doesn't lock positively. For a dedicated rigging knife, I would recommend the Petzl Spatha. It has an excellent blade, cuts efficiently, is very lightweight, is easy to rack on a harness, and is very affordable. The Triangle Piranha is a good emergency use knife, and is so small and lightweight that it's an easy decision to just bring it on every trip in case you need it, but I wouldn't use it if a lot of rigging is expected. The blade and handle are just too small for heavy regular use. The Leatherman Skeletool is a good option as a multi-tool that can be repurposed for rigging duty if needed. It's not the best knife for rigging alone, but the pliers and wire cutters on it are excellent and it can be used for a variety of repair duties. The Benchmade Mini Barrage is an excellent knife with the best blade of all the knives in this review. It is a perfectly capable rigging knife, but the cost is quite high for this application, especially when compared to the Spatha, which is less than one-fourth the price, and nearly as good in performance. The assisted opening feature isn't really needed for caving, and is probably more of a liability, and it may stop working well once it gets full of grit, as all caving gear does. In the end, the slightly better blade is probably not worth the premium price for most cavers. As a final tip, bring a small amount of duct tape and a lighter with your knife. Wrap once or twice around the rope before cutting. This will help keep the fibers together and make a less frayed end. Then use the lighter to melt the end. 